Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Project C. Project C is all about, you know, SE, SEE, Stop Exporting Evil. So it's addressing the West and um, their agendas of just spewing or puking evil um, on Africa. At the same time, it's also a project that is made, meant to open people's eyes and also ask our countries, our African countries, to stop importing evil because that is something that has been happening. Now, of course, my highlight is particularly in Kenya. There's certain things that have been happening under the noses of Kenyans and they just trust their government 100%. You know, when we got a new constitution, everyone was excited, you know, wow, we've got something that at least we are, we are proud of. Um, I, little did I know that that would just be one of the things that would be creating a lot of, of anarchy, a lot of crazy things happening, because the culture of impunity in Africa, believe it or not, is really crazy. To be particular, in Kenya, it's, it's just off rider. Now, in the constitution, one of the things we were voting for were clauses. We wanted to make sure that certain aspects were well represented and not misrepresented, which included family and life. And yes, so they tried to be clear and said marriages between a man and a woman, and of course there were articles uh, on that. And then we went to life where they came up with two articles intentionally, uh, one to confuse the Kenyans that yes, we are actually protecting life. The other one to give permission to people like Mary Stops to kind of work their business and use that article to run away from court cases. So we've got Article 8 and Article 24, both of which are not as strong. The, we are saying, the Constitution says, life begins at conception, but then it quickly hands over the right of that life to doctors, you know? So if two or three physicians think, or gynecologists, or in fact, it's not even gyners, they're talking about uh, medical practitioners, feel like the life of uh, the woman is actually endangered, then they can actually legally procure an abortion. Let's just fast track it a little bit, or slow track it if you may. The culture of impunity in Kenya is so loud, so much so that even cases where we've had people caught in the act just go like that. It's like water under the bridge. And we, the Kenyans, who are supposed to be the employees of the government, have nothing to say about that. This culture has trickled down to every aspect, including the medical field. Just the other day, in fact, it was yesterday, we had a story of a quack doctor who was caught in the act. I, I, I mean, he said himself that he makes money out of abortion. That was under an investigation. It was on NTV by, I think, Dennis Onsarigo. Den Dennis Onsarigo, investigative report. You can check it out on YouTube. And you know what what surprised me was that the highlight the, 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 the highlight right there was not this man procures abortions. It was rather uh, okay. It was rather um it was rather um this is a quack doctor, just that. And every tweet that came after that was a tweet addressing not the abortions, but all oh, poor women, you know, under the hands of this quack doctor who insults them, all oh, poor women, you know, all that. And nothing in it addressed the illegality of the abortion, which tells you what? It actually tells you that we're at a place where even media has been brought out not to address the issue for what it is. They don't want us to talk about what abortion really is about. And so they cover it up very well and try to make it a woman's issue all over again. The guy has been arrested, but I bet you he might not be charged for abortions. He may be charged for being a quack, operating illegal clinics without papers and what have you. And he got, he's got great big people surrounding him. This is not the first time that he is actually getting arrested. He got arrested and he was released on bail. This is the third time. Two million Kenyan ball, and he had the money, and he said he makes money out of that. He also takes drugs. It's obvious. Who's going to perform an abortion and know he's killing a human being and be sane? No, he's that guy who has to be high all the time. Hey. And all the eyes of the people that I saw, the tweets that I saw, were not about the abortion, no. but they were more or less addressing no. the, 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 the aspect of poor women. Why are the women going for abortions in the first place? 
Why isn't the government coming up with pregnancy crisis centers? Why isn't somebody speaking up and saying, hey, do we know what we're doing when we go down that road of abortion? When we're talking about teen pregnancies in Kenya, they're talking about teen pregnancies and how it is that they can prevent the pregnancies. We're not talking about how to save them, to save the babies and save them. And you know, at the end of the day, just kill this culture, first of all, of immorality and fornication, and then also deal with the issue of abortion. Yeah, they're not interested in that, not in the least bit. So now, with that constitution, Mary stops us for a couple of times, mm -hmm. used the clause, and they quote Article, mm -hmm. I think Article 8, where they say that, you know, if in view of a general practitioner or practitioner, medical practitioner, uh, they feel that somebody's health is at risk, then they're able to carry out the procedure. I went to Mary Stop's Facebook with a pseudo account and I was totally surprised. I was able to pull out five women, four kept their babies. Sadly, as I was working with one of them, she actually procured an abortion at six months. She's not regretting it. But one of the things they tell them is, do you really think it's illegal in Kenya? When they ask questions about the legality, the so social media accounts, the um, personnel, the one selling it, quickly responds and says, do you think it's not illegal in Kenya? And who's, not ma who's making it not illegal? As far as I'm concerned, Kenyans knew the constitution they voted in, the constitution they said yes to, was one that was supposed to protect human life. So are we living in ignorance? And who's fooling who? And if that's the case, now that we're calling for another referendum, are we going to have people who will stand and say, until this article is adjusted, we need to tighten the loose ends. We are not going to vote for this referendum as it is, this, this, this uh, constitution as it is. So I've not heard anyone push and say, we need to tighten these loose ends. Now, most of the people that were compiling and you know coming together for to make this uh, constitution weren't jo was jo Joaquin Dobo. Everybody knows she's a high court judge, and a lot of you also know she's a pro choice. She's a pro abort. She was actually quoted as saying at some point that every no H HIV positive women should not be pregnant. And if they do, abortions should be allowed. She has been so adamant standing for the pro-choice agenda. I'm surprised that she's a mother. I, I really am. I am. So that said, let's go to the National Hospital, um, I think International Fund. It's the NHIF, the National Health Fund, the NHIF, which each one of us contributes about 500 shillings. And it's something that is worldwide. So employees, you also, your, 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 your bosses are mandated to actually uh, pay that for you. And if you are self-employed, you're also mandated, you can actually do that for yourself. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's actually helped a few people. Some of us are yet, we, we, we just don't know. We just know that it covers for bed charges and all that. Um, but they had a clause and I was able to interview someone at some point from the NHIF, an NHIF representative who was able to tell me what they covered. Because I asked, what does this clause, reproductive health services, mean? That's where you realize that we've been cheated for a long time. She was very open and she said, wow, you're the first person to ask that question. And she told me that yes, they do cover, in fact, matter stops. <laughs> is part of their uh, uh, providers, medical providers, Mary Stops. And I told her I was perturbed by that because we have a constitution that is supposed to protect human rights and the, the human being from conception. I tried to get through to her and she said, she also doesn't understand because she knows there are a lot of things that are working around. She told me Mandy changes hands very fast and before you know it, that's it. But even before they openly talked about reproductive health services, she told me when she was a field officer, one of the places and one of the hospitals she was checking on was Mary Stops. What does that tell us? Who's playing with who? What mix up are we? What, what kind of jigsaw puzzle are we in? What craziness is going on? That tells you the Ministry of Health under the CES 
is very aware that abortions are being performed, is very aware that marriage stops is doing that, and is very aware when it's partnering with marriage stops just what reproductive health services that they are offering on the ground. They are very aware. If we don't wake up slowly by slowly, we'll start realizing that what we've trusted for the longest time in the name of a constitution and a government will be eating at us. My question is, where are the leaders, the church leaders? Where are the Muslim leaders? Where are the Hindu leaders? I don't know what, the, what, what their beliefs are. But where are the conscious leaders who are supposed to be the eyes for society? Where are they? If you ask me, in Kenya, they're very much asleep. Very much asleep. And it's up to you and me to start asking these pertinent questions. We've done petitions to the CS. There's a petition to ban marriage stops. Mary Stops has been also asked to pull out, pull down the advertisements that are illegal on air, but they're still defiant. Why? There's somebody big somewhere who's protecting them. You and I know the cover that NHIF has. And so Mary Stops is planning to make money out of your money. Because it's not often that I will use the NHIF. I might not even use it for five years. But that cumulative amount is going somewhere to fund even those abortions, to destroy lives. We should ask ourselves these questions and start asking them the questions and tell them what we want and not what they will force down our throats. The other comment that this lady made was, hey, the question that we should be asking is, why are they in business? And I asked her, do you think if women knew the truth about life in their wombs, if they had a chance to see the ultrasounds, do you think many women would actually ascend to the abortions? Mary Stops is selling abortion like lollipops. They're selling abortion like cake. And people are slowly biting into that bait. And in Kenya, the reason why they are adamant, if you ask me, is because nobody has come out full throttle. And I take this opportunity once again to speak to abolitionists, all pro-lifers, who believe that they're pro-lifers and their agenda is actually to fight for life, to wake up and start fighting for the unborn, to come out of looking at the money factor to come out of looking at their pockets and their bank accounts and asking themselves how much will they gain and start looking at the issues on the ground. Because as long as pro-lifers are walking and looking at their pockets, there's no difference between them and pro-choices. They're just one and equal. And they're just using this as a platform to feed each other. If you're a pro-lifer, who wants this thing to be abolished, I am begging from the depth of my heart that you will look into these issues and choose to fight for them for what they are. Choose to push for policies that will change. If you're mandated with a docket that can change things, please begin changing things. Begin utilizing that docket. If you're mandated, you know, and you're under an organization that is funding you, Use it. Use it to address these issues. Use it to silence the provost. Let them have a feel of the presence of the abolitionists here in Kenya. Because I've, I've, I've realized when we're saying pro-life, there are people pro-life, but they have exceptions. If you have exceptions, you're not a pro-lifer. So just use the docket that the Father has given you to fight for innocent lives. And innocent here, I'm talking about the baby and born the born. I'm also talking about the women who are often made fool, are actually fooled into thinking that that's the easy way out. Are we able to come together and think of setting up pregnancy crisis centers? Are we able to come together and even say we will have our own hospital, a pro-life hospital, a maternity pro-life hospital that pushes 
you know, the, the right agenda and teaches people? Are we able to come together and say, hey, we can work on a curriculum, a life curriculum, give it to the government and tell them this is what we want implemented? You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised because they will be like, wow, they're actually doing something as opposed to just stalking and, you know, just filling their social media pages with their selfies. They will begin to see that we have solutions. If we have a pregnancy crisis center, for example, or a pregnancy uh, crisis, crisis center, call center, a home for those who don't have a place, now we are talking. Now we are coming up with solutions. If we are able, and you are mandated, I know Anne Kyoko, you are mandated on the Citizen Go, you know, good job, you know, but use it, Anne, use it. We can have billboards out here speaking about life. Billboards in the right place and it's funded by your uh, by uh, Citizen Go who are heavy funders of pro-life ministry. Use it. Whoever you are, use your space. Come together. Let's come together. Let's stop having this bias. It's not about me. It's not just about you. It's about that innocent life and countless number of lives the knowers, the Wavenias, the new babies that are coming forth to change this planet is about them. Now one thing that I tell myself is this thing has spiraled beyond, you know, beyond much of what people can do but there's so much more we can do but my question is what if one day my children say ask me a question say mama what did you do about it before it got to this place what did you do about it before these pro aborts came and made this legal and stamped it right here in kenya what did you do about it this is what i'm doing about it i'm reaching out to you and i'm calling you to stand for life proactively not reactively, proactively. This is me speaking and saying abortion is the worst terrorism that has ever existed. Let us choose life. I'll again, end with a quote, Mother Teresa. She said, if there is no peace in the world, there can be no peace in the world. So stop questioning about the NHIF. I'm hoping to see petitions if I don't start it myself and or somebody else can actually start it up. Thank you so much.